Hem hemorrhage. You got down there, you and uh, Terry, right? Yeah, me and Terry. Um, and, and Coach Meyer was talking about how exhausted you were, you in particular, you've been playing just the game and the ball out, playing every snap. How did you kind of fight through that and, and have the energy to, to make that play? Uh, I think at the end of the day, just, you want to do, be able to do anything for the football team. Uh, me and Terry kind of been having like a little friendly competition all year uh, over who's the best gunner on the team. So we kind of been going at it. And uh, just getting down there is like, I know if I'm there, Terry's right behind me, or if he's there, I'll be right behind him. So I mean, it's all, it's all fun at the end of the day. Is that weird for you coming in here? You were a five-star recruit, number one corner in the country, blah, blah, blah. And now you, two years later, are worried about who the best gunner on punt coverage is? Instead of like interceptions and that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, I know you want to get interceptions. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, because I guess it feels weird for me. Probably weird, kind of weird for Terry since he's a receiver playing deep, uh, gunner. So, I mean, I think it's kind of just one of the things that Ohio State uh, best players play on special teams. And once you accept that, I feel like your career kind of takes off. Who is the better gunner? Who's currently winning your competition? I mean, uh, y'all saw the game on Saturday, so I, mean, I don't know. Whoever, whoever y'all got, how much, pride do you, with that. how much pride do you as a unit take in not allowing punt return yardage? We take a lot of pride. I mean, last year, going into the TMR game, we had we had allowed zero uh, net return yards. So uh, it was kind of we were kind of upset when DPJ uh, got that return off that pooch punt. But this year, I'm not sure what, what the number is right now. But I, I guess it's relatively low. Well. Chip, I don't know how much you guys get asked this question, but we get it asked a lot. We don't really have a good answer for when an Ohio State cornerback should turn their head back <coughs> to try and find the football. How the technique is taught. Um, what can you uh, maybe explain to us so that we can shed more light on that for anyone who asks us? Uh, at Ohio State, uh, we're coached not to turn and look for the ball unless you're on top of the receiver. So I get that's called in phase. So when you're on top of the receiver, we call that the in phase position. And when you're behind the receiver, you're out of phase. And at, at that time, you have to play through his hands. So unless you're in phase, you're not supposed to look back for the ball. But sometimes you'll see us look back for the ball out of phase. But most of the time, you'll see us try to play through the receiver's hands because we're either uh, behind the receiver or we're uh, level, with the, level with the receiver. But when we're on top of the receiver, we'll always look back at the football. We only really hear about it when you guys get called for pass interference. You know, what is the, how correct do you have to play it to avoid some of these penalties? I think you have to play it really precise. Um, uh, like I said, it's, it's really a work in progress uh, as far as. I mean, we want to be able to stay on top, stay on top of the receivers. So I, I think as the season progresses and we start getting in that ideal position, yeah. uh, you'll see us be able to look back at the football a lot more. Sean Wade's done a lot on defense, some corners, and safety, some nickel. It seems. Can you talk about what his role is? Uh, right now, Sean's playing nickel on third down. Uh, he's he's working with the safety group, and uh, at the end of a lot of and at the end of a lot of games that are kind of getting to that plow range, you'll see him work corner. So I mean, he's working all three uh, DB positions, and I think he's doing a really good job of all three. Well, can you talk about what you've seen out of him, his development? Uh, it's been pretty cool just seeing, uh, since he got hurt, uh, just seeing him fight back, uh, grind through the offseason, and then be able to make plays on Saturday. Yeah. Hey, you guys Jeff, came you? in together, you and, you and Sean. Yeah. What did you see from him last year when he had the surgery and then was just kind of waiting his time? How, do you, how did you see him handle that? Uh, I could tell he was kind of down just because he was really disappointed that he couldn't be out there with uh, playing with us. But I, I just respect him so much because he didn't complain not one time. He kind of put his head down and, and worked every single day. Hey, Jeffrey, your coaches have made a point to tell us that as well as you guys have played, you haven't played your best football. How far away do you feel like you guys are from showing your potential? Uh, I think Saturday we really scratched the surface because even though there were some big plays involved in that game on the defensive end, I think our defense did a pretty good job of just uh, holding the number one ranked uh, scoring offense to, uh, you know, they were averaging, I think, 50 plus a game. 55.5. Yeah, and they got like, what, 26? Yeah. So, I mean, that's cutting the, down their scoring in half. So, when you can get a, a defensive performance like that, I think at the end of the day, all things considered, you have to kind of give yourself pat on the back. Yeah, it, it, but you said scratching the surface. Does that mean that, that, that you think that there's more there, that there, that as the season gets along, you think that this team could even do better than what we saw on Saturday? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that uh, personally for me, I know the defensive line is a pretty strong group. Uh, and 
And so they kind of set the, set the bar where our whole defense should be as far as the linebackers and the secondary. So once everyone hits that defensive line group, then we're just going to all elevate together. And that's, that's pretty much one of the plan. Jeff, could you characterize your development this year? How, obviously, you were, you were hurt this spring, uh, played a limited role last year, and now you're a full-time guy. How do you think you played, and what's the next, what's the next step in your development? Uh, for me, like, I mean, up to Tulane game, like I told y'all, my mind is just going for one percent better every single every single week. And, uh, uh, for me, I, I feel like I've taken that step every single week. So I guess now that that past week is done, it's, it's time to get one percent better this week for uh, Indiana. Jeff, Jeff what, does it take, what does it take to get to that defensive line level of play for you personally, or for the position group, for you guys? Uh, the number, one, the number one job for a corner at Ohio State is to not even the ball. So when we can hold uh, receiving quarters to zero catches a game or one, two catches, I mean, other guys are on scholarship too, they're going to make plays, uh, then I, I feel like that we can reach that defensive line uh, level. Do you feel like uh, like we're, we're sitting there watching that fourth uh, fourth down play by Penn State the other night from the press box, and you guys have like nine guys on the line of scrimmage, it looks like, well, maybe eight plus the two linebackers and the – well, they were up in the line, but yeah. do you feel like you're? What do you feel like you're part of there? An extremely aggressive group. What what is, what is it like out there in those kind of plays, Jeff? Where y'all are, you know what I mean? Getting after the other team. Yeah, I feel like that I, looks like some stuff pro pro guys would call. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like it's like sport down. So you know the game's on the line right there, and it's like we we got a we got the, the brothers right next to left and right of you, and everyone's trying to get to that ball while doing their job, make that play, and. Make the play. Is it fun though being a part of a defense that plays like that, that plays aggressive? Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. I mean, it's kind of like uh, it's a lot of, a lot of risk playing defense like that. Yeah. But in the day, it's a lot of reward. I was going to ask you about the risk part. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of yeah. risk. I mean, you guys have seen some, some big plays this year, unfortunately. But we're trying to tighten that up. But I, 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 y'all also seen some rewards out of that, like last week. So yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, what, 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 in your opinion, needs to be tightened up more than anything else that avoids the 93-yard play? Uh, I think everyone is doing their job. I mean, no one trying to make the play, but everyone is doing their job, and the play will just come. I mean, if everyone worries about doing the job, one eleventh of the job, then uh, we have a whole defense of guys doing what they're supposed to do. Jeff, Jeff last what question. is this, what does that say about the ceiling of this team? You guys have had. Miscues, mistakes, missed tackles, but you guys, I mean, you Last guys question, probably have Jeffrey. the best resume of any team in the country. And I mean, I, I know it's a long way off for the college football playoff, but what does that say about you guys as a unit that you can make those mistakes and still beat top 10 teams in one of the most hostile environments in the country? Uh, I think it says a good amount about the coaching that we have every day and the, the work that we put in to. Uh, Kind of uphold the standard that Ohio State has, has had in success. So I'm pretty much excited just to see how far this team can go and how, how much better we can get. Thanks, Thank Jeff. You, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, man. You guys have a nice night.